going into year two for us as, as an offense, it, it really becomes less about learning the system all over again. It's more our theme this springtime has been back to the basics. Um, and so we've been harping, harping consistently on the fundamentals. And that was Ben Johnson yesterday at uh, Minicamp talking about last year they put the system in play. This year it's not about putting it in, it's about more so in my mind. It's perfecting it. Year two. And I think he's absolutely right. When you put an offense in and it starts to work, there are going to be games in which you come against a better defense. There are going to be teams that know how to, you know, pregame, uh, uh, excuse me, scout against that. There will be teams that just aren't better than you. But then you start to come into your own in year two is when you put the nuances on the mask. Yep. It's when you know exactly how the car drive. And you know the little, I know I can turn it here. I know I can tweak it here. I know if I get it up to 70 and crank it here. They are in that process now of yeah. they know their car, and now they want to be elite. Hey, when they hired Dan Campbell and he brought the staff in, he said it's a three-year project. It's, it's year three right now. But last year was really the big step. That's why we're calling it year two. Because the first year was a throwaway. You saw him stay in some games. Obviously, you saw maybe there's a flicker of hope. Then they said those magic words, we're going to run it back with the same guys. And they did. Oh and God. it kind of worked, right? Especially at the end of the year. Beginning of the year, the defense was trash. At the end of the year, the defense was probably top 15 yeah. in the league. And they almost made it, guys. We almost had our first playoff and uh, well since 2014 or so maybe 16 i forget what it was but we weren't going to win that year anyway last year they really had a chance to win this year they taken it up to the next level man and it yeah. starts with the kids that they developed the kids that they took and i just saw we got espn on the background and i saw Micah Parsons <laughs> and, oh, and, they were, they, boy. and uh, Damian Woody was was chatting about Micah Parsons you see all the plays he makes he's all over the field but a year that year that same year a guy named Penny Sewell was drafted here in Detroit and he is a leader man he is uh, Penny Sewell he announced this year that he wants to take on more of a leader role a leadership role with the Detroit Lions first year was more so as a leader learning under Taylor Decker Frank Ragnow Kind of start seeing him take some leadership roles last year. Saw him break down a couple of times during the game. The first the year, remember when he stood up to uh, and Aaron Donald? Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. To me, to me, that's when I really fell in love with the kid. I'm telling you, I so, fell in love with them Samoan, that day. Samoans are built a little different. Jeez, they're, they're, they're man. built a little different. But him wanting to take a leadership role this season. This is year three. He's ready. This is going to be his All Pro year. I'm predicting it now. It's, I agree. It's good because he's a quiet guy. He's a quiet guy, but he wants to see the leadership role, man. I think this is going to be really good for that offense. They need a voice. Like, if we're being honest, they need a voice. I'm on Ross St. Brown is a guy they trust. He catches everything. He's where he's supposed to be. He's a leader. But a voice like Panay Sewell, it could take them to the next level. Hey, number 58, he even looks like he's slimmed down. He's in better shape now right. than he has been since he came. He had that baby fat on him. He looks like he's mean, lean, fighting machine. And here he is yesterday at OTAs. Actually, one of the teammates came up to me and was like, man, you got to talk. I'm really good. So I just kind of stepped into that role and just let my heart speak. Right. And uh, just, I just ran, ran from there. You yep. heard him, man. He wants to be a leader, and he is stepping up his game. And to be a leader on that offensive line, man, you played. Yeah. How many guys on the offensive line have you played with that could be a Penny Sewell? Well, I mean, I played with Nick Mango. I played with Alan Fanica. Uh, Alan did they have that? Did they have that leadership quality? Nick Mango did. Like like Nick Mango definitely did. Joe Thomas. There you go. Joe, Joe Thomas. He definitely did. Um, he probably was the leader of that team. He was. He was. Jonathan Goodwin, who was who who was uh, he was a two time Pro Bowler, center, played in Michigan. I played with him in Michigan. He was like that for the 49ers. He was a really good. Uh, center. He was a really good leader of that unit who had Joe Staley, who was an all-pro. You had Mike Ayupati, who was a pro bowler, like Jonathan Goodwin. Was, but he's in that air with Nick Mango. You're talking about Damian Woody. Damian Woody's another guy oh, who yeah. wants the Super Bowl ring. So playing with those guys, I see that too. And Panay Su, he's unrelenting. He speaks when he's supposed to. He's, he talks soft, but he carries a big step. What, what say you, Flano? Yeah, Penny Sewell is on the short list of guys on this team who you could say is the best overall player on this team. And he's obviously one of the younger guys, although with another couple of rookie classes coming in, he's going to soon become the veteran. If this team is going to hit their potential, especially this offense, Penny Sewell is going to be a big part of it. I predict 
that Penny Sewell is the most likely player on this team to make an All-Pro. I'm not saying he's going to do it this year, but he is going to make one the fastest. And the fact that he's taking a leadership role, it just... It works out. It works out great. He is the type of guy that the Detroit Lions need. And when you looked at him in that interview, he looks fantastic. He Body looks. Man. He looks lean and mean. It's like Penny Sewell is now like you know, muscles Penny Sewell. So I I love it. This is great news for the Detroit Lions. I think we got our potential future Hall of Fame guy. Yeah, and you got to be honest. I mean, you think about it, you talk about he looked a lot better, a lot different. You're absolutely right. But think about this: How old was Penny Sewell when we drafted him? He's 19 years old. Yeah, and he sat out his he's last a, year. He's a kid. Yeah. Penay Sewell was a kid that's growing up on the job. Now you see me starting to come into those mature yeah. years. And not only do I like this from the standpoint of just uh, him wanting to, to be a leader, him wanting to lead this team that's a damn good offense, but also that means he wants to put more onus on himself. Let's call a spade a spade. Penay Sewell, Sewell last two years as a right guard. I want to say, and I could be wrong, right tackle, slam. I want to say he's second or first in penalties. Second or first in penalties acquired since he's been in the NFL and starting at right tackle. So by him wanting to be a leader, that means he wants to put more onus in himself. That means he's ready to eliminate penalties because you cannot lead without be leading by example. So that is another thing the Lions fans should look out for. Do you think he'll eventually go back to his original spot, left, left tackle? tackle? Or do you think this is it? He's a right tackle going forward. I think he's so talented right now. And you look at Taylor Decker and the years coming up on him, he won't get a second contract in my estimation. He already so, got it. Well, well, in terms of like the long run. Yeah. I, I could see it happening. But for right now, why mess up a good thing? The yeah. way in which this thing is clicking for the Detroit Lions, it is clicking as is. Taylor left, Panay right, Frank right. I mean, Frank, Frank right, Frank middle. Yep. That's how it was operating for them. So leave it alone. Hey, man, uh, one of the guys that we spoke to, uh, you know, last month, it's a guy that one of the new guys here from the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cam Sutton. And we had him on and he couldn't yes, have been sir. nicer. He's Could not have been yes. nicer. And uh, someone asked him about being in Detroit or now. Here's what he had to say yesterday at OTAs. And uh, it just feels like obviously a second home. You guys have you know embraced me with, o with open arms. And, um, you know, just having that love man, energy behind you makes you want to, you know, run through a wall for a city. You know what I mean? So. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, this is the type of love that the they're city, getting the bright players. But this is the type of love Detroit, the city of Detroit, has always wanted. When you look at guys that make it here, when you look at teams that are immortal here, you think about Darren McCarty, who sits exactly where you sit. You think about him and the Red Wings of that era and why they're immortalized. They gave the city all that they wanted, and they gave them more. But at the end of the day, they just gave them energy. They gave them all the energy. They put forth everything that they had. Think about all the Lions fans that the at the Lions Lions, Lions fans. <laughs> Look at all the Lions fans, the Lions the players, Lions players fans. that Lions fans have Thank loved you, over the years. It's guys that give all the air. Yeah. Chris Spillman is uh, the first guy that comes to mind. But why is he so beloved? He came to every game. He showed up. He gave you all he had. He left it all in the field. Lomas Brown. Lomas yep. is a fan of the show. The players that we love were the players that get even Barry. Now, we don't like how the Barry. situation ended. Barry was there all the time. Yeah. He was there for the team. And that's what I think you're saying with these Detroit Lions. They're all there and want to give it all. Sam, you a Cam Sutton fan going forward here? What's your take on Cam? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely a Cam Sutton fan go going moving forward. I think he's going to be the number one corner on this team. And I'll tell you what. He's coming off of his best season of his career as a full-time starter with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It wouldn't shock me at all if Cam Sutton makes a Pro Bowl at some point during his time with Detroit. If he has his best years of his career during his time with Detroit. And I'll tell you what, he's got a pretty good secondary around him to yeah, help him does. out with guys yeah, like Emmanuel Mosley and Kirby Joseph and CJ Gardner Johnson, CJ Gardner -Johnson and Brian Branch, Tracy Walker, all of that. And also, that pass rush I think is going to make, make quarterbacks get rid of the ball fast so maybe Cam Sutton can get some interceptions and... I mean, last season, he allowed less than a 70 passer rating when targeted. That is elite. And I think he can continue that this year with, with Detroit. I really do. Speaking about that secondary, and you, you mentioned one of the guys I'm going to talk about right now, and it's everybody's favorite. It's Aaron Rodgers' daddy, right? It's Kirby <laughs> Joseph. Someone <laughs> asked him, daddy. hey, you don't have Aaron Rodgers to kick around anymore. Ooh, y'all trying to fast. <laughs> <laughs> Like you played a part in it though, you had the last pick, last his last throw. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I heard that Green Bay wasn't working out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. He gonna do his thing, I'm gonna do my thing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Famous Los off Instagram. He's an Instagram influencer. He always talking about Steph Curry and shooting shots. He plays basketball. Kirby Joseph looks just like uh, Famous Los, but I love that energy. Oh, like, God. That, like personality it's infectious. Wise. One of the big things we lost, we lost in Jamal Williams. We lost the personality. Whether you like Naruto. There he is. I was just about to say it. Whether you like Naruto <laughs> or not, whether you yeah. like anime, you loved 
Jamal Williams for being him. You love that energy. I think Kirby Joseph can provide that spark. And he's on defense. I always like it a little more when that personality comes from defense. Because defense, you can afford to be a little more fun yeah. when you're defense. On offense, a little more serious. You got to look for all of them. Yeah. You got to look for checks at the lines. They rotate to this side. You can't be a serious defense. You can have a little and more fun. And I saw your Twitter yesterday. You saw Kirby's face. <laughs> you saw his free JMO t-shirt. I saw it. And you wrote, Big Ten. Yeah, hey, it's the Big Ten. It's that Big Ten energy, man. JMO started <laughs> off in Ohio State. Ohio State is a part of the Big Ten, of course. Like, that's that Big Ten energy, man. Like, one thing about it, we support our own. We may hate each other, but we support our own against anybody else because it is the Big Ten versus everybody else. Absolutely. And Kirby Joseph, I mean, he really endeared himself to Dang. Detroit Lions by, well, obviously by being a, a damn good rookie. He forced six turnovers, four interceptions, and two fumbles. And it doesn't hurt that three of them were against our nemesis as Detroit Lions fans, Aaron Rodgers himself, including basically closing down Lambeau Field to end the season and closing out Aaron Rodgers' career with the Green Bay Packers. He is a guy, Kirby Joseph, that I think just has a nose for the football, is a guy that you could almost pencil in as three to six interceptions per year. And hopefully this year he becomes a little bit better in coverage from the beginning of the year. But Kirby Joseph is a ball hawk and a playmaker, and I'm very, very glad that he is a Detroit Lion. If Aaron Rodgers does not work out for the team that I have across my chest, and that's the New York Jets, you can argue that Kirby Joseph himself retired Aaron Rodgers. Because the last thing that you will remember is Aaron Rodgers falling from grace in terms of becoming immortal. Well, it seems like Kirby Joseph is the guy that made him immortal. And who else? Who did Aaron Rodgers walk out with? Randall, oh, Cobb. Randall, Randall Cobb. Cobb. He chased them both out of town. He did. To New York. He did. I wish, I, I wish we were playing the Jets this year. That would have been fun. Oh, man. That would have been That would have been, been, been fun. That would have been But it's okay. Let's just play our schedule. Yeah. Get our it's, 11. It's, it's, it's hard enough. Get our 11, 12 wins. Yeah. Cross my fingers. Yeah.